Hey everybody, Stu Smith here, my friend Pat Bonus with a, another tactical fitness report. And we are going to touch on something we've discussed throughout many of these tactical fitness reports is taking some time to work on your weakness. Like Jeff and I recently discussed a, a timeline for a, be a better recruit and to be better well-rounded and all these things. Uh, you know, elements of fitness that you have to be. And Pat had some really good insight on it. And uh, I wanted to bring him in and discuss, you know, just, just some of the weaknesses that are typical to the spec ops candidate as they are going on their journey and show some of the, the balances and imbalances that occur when you have really high level strengths you know, that are usually associated with a, almost an equal and opposite weakness. So let's, uh, let's take it from there, Pat. We were talking just about, you know, timeline for weaknesses. And, you know, how, how did you want to start that off? Yeah, I, I think the difficult thing with, with all of us is, you know, how do, if we recognize a weakness, if we have the ability to recognize our weakness, where we're comparing ourselves, you know, to ourselves or to others, how do we recognize that and then maintain strengths in other areas where if, you know, you're a, a poor swimmer, you know, that you might have a, a predilection to spend every day in the pool to fix it. And, and while you're doing that, you're losing everything else. You know, you're not in the gym, you're not doing your cows, you're not running because you're so nervous and focusing on this weakness. And then, you know, do you have the ability to look silly? You know, you know, do you have the ability to, to go in to the pool, not be good at it and be okay with it and understand that the growth mindset understands that you're not going to start off great. You're going to work to improve. And, you know, the next time you come back, you're going to have self-reflected on where you weren't doing well. You're going to maybe see someone. And I'll tell you at the pool, there's always people who are willing to offer their advice. There's always a former swim coach. There's a guy you know, they always are willing to offer advice. It's a great environment for that. And then, you know, also I've seen swimmers who want to get their run times down, um, runners who, who want to increase their bench press or their push-ups, or they can't do their pull-ups. Um, you know, and, and I saw a guy the other day who I taught a little hack on his pull-ups. I said, if you have a good, strong shoulder, don't do that. Don't do that negative coming down. You're, you're wasting energy on the way down. And so, you know, by just getting chin over bar and pulling just little hacks that you can work on and, and do it safely and accept that feedback, you know, that, that what I told him, you know, he was very respectful. He started asking more questions about it. Um, and I wasn't trying to be the smartest guy in the room. I was just sure. trying to say, here's a tip if it works for you. And for, for certain individuals that you have to be able to not just point out your own weaknesses, you have to have other people point them out then you have to be willing to work on them. Yeah, that's true. Because, uh, you know, when you get feedback on a weakness, it is typically negative feedback. Not necessarily like you're stupid because you can't swim, negative feedback. It's just say like you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, here's how you fix it, right? You have to be able to handle that kind of, of feedback, right? Because you're going to get it throughout this journey. And then you're going to get it tenfold, every day when you're going through your selection program, but they're not going to tell you how to do it right. I mean, they're just going to tell you that you're failing and you're doing it wrong. You're the worst student ever. And can you kind of take that kind of mental negative feedback as well? So there's a level of maturity that goes with under one acknowledging your weakness and then two having the ability to learn how to fix them and the, I guess, dedication to practice until you can't get it wrong. Yeah. Like yeah, everybody well, tries to do it until you get it right, but you got to practice it tenfold so you can't get it wrong in the future. Yeah. And I see um, individuals who have a good amount of time, you know, they have, they have a good amount of time before they have to, you know, take an official PST or before they commission or whatever. And I think that, you know, as I've seen it and even, even talking with some other trainees and one in particular, he used to be a big kind of AMRAP, you know, go, 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 go. And he's, he found that that was really kind of 
it was hurting him because then, you know, he was doing all that on his own time. And then when he had to go to his like battalion workouts, yep. he could still do them, but he was zapped, you know? So he started to find that he, he's not, he is by no means someone who, who, who scales back, but he learned just how to maybe change it up. And so he's really, really big in, into periodization. He has books and books, and books and he's done so many different workouts, but I think he's gotten very good at figuring out where he's not good. And what happens when you start to, to fix weaknesses is that you can go away from them too for a period of time. And you still have to have the courage to, if you're a good, good swimmer and you haven't swam for a while, cause I don't know, you went on that young twenties. I want to get as big as possible, you know, sure. cycle, you know, which happens. Um, do you have the courage to go back into the pool and not be your former self? You know, I know you're going to know it's going to be, you know, I'll tell you right now, cycling, the worst thing for me getting back on a bike is my butt. You know, it's like, do I want to sit back on that bike and go through the first week, you know, of the sit bones and the saddle sores and all that. Right. So that's, that's different, but are you going to be able to be okay with being good at something prior and then being weak at it, you know, in the future and, and catch up. And spending that couple of weeks of, of hard work. Well, well here, you, you had a good example earlier before we were uh, filming was about the collegiate swimmer who comes in to you and has, you know, has no problem in the pool. I mean, pretty much any water event, you know, at a, at an aquatic level spec ops like buds or um, PJs are, are not going to have any problem with the swimming water confidence all of those because they've just spent their whole life in water. However, there's usually an equal opposite weakness that goes with that. And that, and for a zero gravity athlete, it's typically gravity. So think about now you have the impact forces of running. You have sometimes even the hypermobility of your joints from being in that zero gravity swimming. They're really hypermobile and sometimes that can lead to some injury so um you know you just get a lot of running injuries typically from the swimmer and so what this guy does is he spends all right i don't need to swim so let's focus on you know a running progression let's build some strength let's work on strengthening these joints and muscles so i do better on the calisthenics test and then they go into the pool and a collegiate swimmer who would be laughed off his swim team if he did a seven minute 500 um, is going to be front of the pack in a spec ops PST, right? So he, he has to realize that yes, you know, this seven minutes is going to be really slow from the way I used to do it, but it's still going to kick butt in the, you know, the spec ops world. In fact, you're probably only going to be, you'll definitely be top, two three percent with a seven minute swim and a 500 there may be a few handful of guys that may be anywhere near you um with those type of scores but did you spend enough time getting the equal and opposite weaknesses turned into strengths that's that's what we're talking about here and that's why you know jeff and i really discussed the timeline of having like 18 months to really do this, um, we, we draw it out at like an 18 month window of if you have a weakness, now's the time to work on it in your first six months. And then we can kind of put it all together, maintain some strengths while we still work on some weaknesses. Next thing you know, now we're going to put it all together and start building durability, work capacity. And next thing you know, you're ready to go. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, no. And I think that's exactly you know, where it, it comes in is, is you talked about the gray man and that's where I think it kind of, you know, we were talking and you said you had written an article on it and, you know, we've talked about the timeline where we're looking at, you know, I think it's great that you and Jeff talked about it because we're looking at populations that they, you know, they're hitting the button and they want their packages on prime the next day. They want their yes. official PST that month when they're not really ready for it. And yeah. it's really tough to tell someone you're not ready to follow your dream right? Yeah. The, uh, what you're saying is, is I've seen it happen. And it's exactly true is that, you know, you, you have a really, really strong runner that doesn't know how to swim, super lean, not buoyant, not good in the pool, uh, is dragging their legs behind them. 
Hard, um, yeah. You get you get someone who's big in the weight room, strong, can bench all day, can you know do that. You know that football player can do the two twenty five. You know max. You know bench press for for reps. They're going to be not very mobile in the pool. Their shoulders are going to be stiff. They're they're going to be heavy on their feet when they're running. And so what I I had and I you know and I I tried to coin a phrase a long time ago about the polished gray man, and that's someone who you know is that seven minute five hundred swimmer, but's running a nine minute mile and a half that's doing, you know, 70 plus push ups, doing 15 plus pull ups. That every single one of those is very good. Is it the guy who can have very great, you know, um, strength to weight ratio and do over 20 pull ups? You'll find that person who's super strong in the bar is usually not going to be the strongest swimmer. Or are they going to spend the time to try it, like you said, to have that equal opposite? And, yeah. and is the collegiate swimmer? that comes into the pool, like you said, and like we were talking about that, you know, you're looking at kids that are swimming in high school, sub five minute, five hundreds, right? So if they're swimming a seven minute, uh, you know, they're hyper, hyper competitive, but when you're in a collegiate or a high school swim program, are you getting out of the pool, having a quick change, maxing your pull, maxing right. your sit, maxing your push, and then going for a run? Yes. You know, are, is, you're not. So, the, uh, you have to be willing to not just recognize a weakness, be okay with not being the best at, at your specific discipline. At what you were once good at. Yeah. 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 I had to do the same thing. I mean, I came in with a powerlifting, lifting background, sprinting background, um, you know, multiple sports. And, you know, once you start preparing on that tactical athlete journey, all of those numbers go way down. In fact, I didn't even test them. I was like, I don't even want to see because I know I haven't, haven't benched, deadlift, or squatted in so long. I don't even want to see where I'm at because, one, I'm probably going to hurt myself. Uh, and I didn't really need to worry about it. I knew I was still strong, but I needed to be a better cardio athlete. I need to be able to run. I need to be able to swim. You know, and it took some time. It took about a year to really make that transition. And for most people, it takes about that same amount of time, whether you are a big guy trying to lose weight and you're super strong, like an offensive lineman trying to lose weight and go do whatever, or if you're a, a skinny cross-country runner trying to do just the opposite and build strength, and, but you still got to swim. So you got to add swimming in there too. So yeah, I mean, the, the, I think what you just mentioned there a minute ago about how the swimmer doesn't have to go do all these other things after he swims is that that's the difference between athletics and tactical athletics. You know, you, a tactical athlete has to be great at just a few things. Whereas the tactical athlete has to be, did I say that right? Tactical athlete has to be really good or good polished gray. If you want to call it that, I, th I like that term um, at everything. Right? They, they just can't let it go. In fact, they did a study, you know, did you see the help? The Hell Week study on uh, Seal Swick. If you go to SealSwick.com, it's the official Navy Seal Swick website. Yeah, they have a Hell Week study. Pe people that succeeded in Hell Week, and they put all these numbers out there from, you know, the PST scores, the you know the advanced PST scores where they run a little bit like the exit PST from prep. Uh, they threw in some lifts in there as well, and it just showed like a uh, just big graph of who did well, who did not do well uh, when it came to hell week. And you kind of had like this big bell curve of, of people who did really well and people that didn't do very well. And the people on the far ends there that were really, really good or really, really bad at, at some of these events, they typically did not do well in hell week, but it was everybody in the averages that did really well. If, if that makes sense. So, you know, even the guys that are at 35 plus pull-ups or a 23 minute four mile timed run didn't do well in hell week. Right. You know, because like I said, there's an equal and opposite corresponding weakness somewhere for those guys. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I said a long time ago, uh, in a, in a podcast, I think it might've been one of our first podcasts that, that we did together. And um, I told you I was fortunate enough to meet a really humble um, former SEAL commander named Perry Van User. 
-hmm. And he, he told the, the candidates a very, I don't know if they really heard it because the group he was speaking to had a top notch collegian swimmer in there. And what he, you know, he came, he was one of the oldest guys to go through buds. He came as a Marine and he told a story about his friend who was a really good runner. And we talked about this, how you found a friend who was a really good runner, yep. who was a really good swimmer. Well, his was different. He was actually, he was in buds and the collegiate swimmer, they're standing there in the middle of the night and the way the surf's up and they're going to, they're being told they have to go in and, and go into the water. And the collegiate swimmer's like, this isn't safe. I'm not going to do it. And Ben Hughes was like, no, no, dude, don't, don't worry. It'll be 45 minutes. We'll be done. We'll be back in our beds. You know, don't worry about this. We'll be fine. And all the while he's telling the story about how he, he had come from like a construction background. Like he wasn't like a, wasn't a good runner, wasn't a good swimmer, was just kind of, you know, could lift and do heavy things and whatever. So his really good friend who's a collegiate swimmer ended up ringing the bell, tapping out. Then they were on a, you know, like a, they were naked and on like a metal kind of PT platform oh, yeah. at night. Here. And his friend who was a good runner and who was getting through started just going and he was so cold. And, you know, Van Huser said jokingly how he was a little chubby, you know, he had a little fat. So, <laughs> but his, his friend had to, to get dropped and yeah. his friend was dropped because he was literally shaking in convulsions because he was so cold. And that was the very, very, I think what he was trying to say is guys, don't be really good at one thing or the other. You know, just like you said, you want to be right in the middle and you want to be able to be open to do different things. And I think accepting the fact that, you know, you're not going to be the lead of the pack in the runs. You're not going to be the lead of the pack in the swims. It's not accepting mediocrity. No. It's not that at all. But if you're leading the pack in the swims, right, yeah, you're a lead at that, but you're below mediocre in everything else, potentially. Potentially. Potentially, yeah. And, you know, and I'm not saying that there's there, – There are some guys that are literally good at everything. And yes. And you're just going to go there and it's like, you're just such a machine. It's impressive. You know? Yeah, you know, and, and I've seen that too. Uh, you know, Chip, my my former student who is uh, – he's actually now uh, – he's a helicopter pilot, but he was in the Marine Corps. He, he decommissioned as a captain, but he got down to Quantico and we're talking. He's like, I don't belong here. He's like, I got a guy here who's six five, you know, two twenty, benches, runs, does everything. He's a road scholar, you know. Oh. He's like, what am I doing there? He's like, no, no, you're supposed to be there. But he he's run into those machines, yeah. you know, that that beyond polish gray, the silver guy, you know, who can just do everything. And uh, you know, I think that this is uh, is not, uh, you know, it's tough. And, and like I said, it's tough for me to say this and, and, you know, and to speak about myself, understanding that I haven't done anything, but I've, I, you know, when I was a competitive cyclist, you know, I got so much on my bike and I got so thin and I got so light and I was chasing that and going up hills that there's no way I could have got in and deadlifted 405. I my you know, my vertebrae would have shot out my, you know, my back. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we do tend to, to get into these, these realms where we're, we're good at one thing. And like you said, the tactical athlete, uh, kid who I have to write a program for, I've been, I've been so busy, but he wants to be a firefighter. And so if you want to be a firefighter, you don't just have to run. Um, you know, you don't, you don't just have to be able to lift. You have to be able to carry things. You have to be able to have gear. You have to have restriction on your breathing, right? So, you know, stuck a sock in your mouth and get sandbags, you know, <laughs> and walk upstairs, you know, um, you know, put on a weight vest and, and get on the stair climber and just, just go and, and get very used to those things. You know, the, the being able to climb over something with weight, be able to pull yourself through with weight, Grip. um, you know, so, so very, grip work. yeah, very specific to, you know, a tactical athlete and, and, and sit down and reflect and think of, could you be going into a situation where you're carrying a hose? So I have a rope, you could carry that. You could be carrying a, a Jaws of Life or a Sawzall. You could probably find the specs and the weight on that. So you could get oh, a yeah. dumbbell or a kettlebell yep. to that and carry that. Carry that rope across a gym holding, you know, a 70-pound dumbbell and just do that for reps for the chance of what you may have to do, you know, in your profession. And yeah. understand if you're not there yet, I think a big thing too is, you know, going back to um, the polished gray is that when you go into a pool and – you know, or you go into a track and you have like some high school kids buzzing around you. Are you okay? Is your ego in check where you can kind of laugh at yourself? And be like, wow, yeah, I'm not there yet. I'm not ready, yeah. you know? And, and, and when you're in your training, you know, and I see um, a lot of guys on your videos that are not very good. I see some really good ones. Oh, I, see, yeah. I see great improvement. And 
I think it takes a lot of courage to come down and see you, you know, and, and go in front of a, a Navy SEAL who's pretty good at everything and a lot of other guys that are good at things that are really close to shipping off yep. and accepting that you're going to potentially look a little silly when you do your stroke or a flip turn or whatever, um, you know, and, and, you know, can you show up again and can you laugh at yourself and can you, can you look at that, you know, to change it? And, and to get to the level that you want to get to and whatever it is within whatever profession you're going for that you need, are you willing to take the steps to, you know, to, to look foolish and fix it and continue to get back and allow yourself the ability to, you know, show the improvement, you know, because that's, that's what a lot, a lot of people quit, you know, because they go into a gym and they get embarrassed, you know, right. they go, you know, and they don't want to go in and, and, and have five pounds on either side of the bench press. And because they don't understand, um, or they don't have the positive encouragement of like, we've all started there. We all started somewhere and we all started at zero and, you know, on, on, on one thing or another. And I think it's an important thing in the process. No, that's a great point. Um, so let, let's spend the the rest of the time kind of talking about a system that helps people work on those weaknesses while maintaining strengths. Cause that's really what you need. You know, you can't just, string together a bunch of workouts that you find on the internet or from some fitness magazine and make it a weekly program that's going to yield results. I have a system. I've been doing it for over 20 years and it's a tactical athlete periodization program. And it's really, it's a seasonal program. So we actually use the days of the year or the seasons of the year Um, And we focus on different elements of fitness. So for instance, uh, we're right now in our strength cycle where we are, you know, running a lot less. Uh, We still swim, but we warm up with all the calisthenics that we get tested with. So if it's an upper body day, we're warming up with short sprint runs with push-ups and maybe some pull-ups in between, uh, just kind of loosen things up a little bit. And then we go lift a little bit heavier in the gym. And then we swim afterwards. We may do a supplemental run afterwards, but it's short. And it may be just enough to maintain your mile and a half speed. Yeah. It might, might be some goal pace intervals. But as the spring comes by, we start shifting out of lifting and adding in more calisthenics, start a running progression to where we're actually going to add some more distance and speed, uh, goal pace speed to those longer runs. So you got your mile and a half to four and five mile runs that you're trying to prepare for whatever job you're going to do that has a lot of running in. Um, so we p- do that all over the summer. And by the end of the summer, we've kind of maxed out everything. We're kind of burnt out from running, burnt out from uh, ca- high rep calisthenics. We start going down this little bell curve of intensity right to a little taper zone where we actually test, kill kill the PST zone because we're probably maxing out right there. And there's ways to put that taper in wherever you want in the year, depending on when you need it. And then we go back into the fall and we start ramping up the lift cycle again. So that's how we do it. And what it enables us to do is focus on our strength and power, speed and agility in the winter. We focus on our endurance, muscle stamina, um, flexibility, mobility, you know, during the uh, spring and summer, but we're also maintaining all the others. So sometimes in the summer, we'll, we'll have some second workouts that are just 30 minutes long, uh, just a supplemental lift, just to kind of work some of those auxiliary muscle groups that calisthenics don't hit. So that's my system and it, it works. And, and your and your system is it's perfect, and it's what uh, to be quite honest, many many people need to get back to periodization. Athletes, so many athletes, when you played, you played more than one sport. And <clears throat> what happens after football? What I mean, what sport are you doing after that? It's it's you're still active and you're still engaging, but you're not engaging the same exact muscles, the joints in the same way. So what you're doing is is you're never getting too far away and you're still working and you're still growing in different areas. Periodization is something that we don't do as we got into more specialization. I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. And I'm seeing more injuries. I mean, I'm seeing freshman kids with torn rotator cuffs. I'm I, that I didn't ACL surgeries. Unbelievable. And it's, it's, they're overuse. 
Um, and there's, there's a higher propensity for injury when you're, it, it's just like if you drive more, you're more likely to get into an accident as well. And it's yeah. a little different physiology, but the, the key term, <clears throat> excuse me, the term I kept shaking my head at, kept shaking my head at as you were talking about your system is supplemental. So no matter what you're doing, so if you're on a lift cycle, are you still swimming? Yes. If you're on a, if you're on a heavy run cycle, are you still swimming? If you're on a heavy swim cycle, are you still running or lifting? Right. And so, you know, that's the thing is that if my swim right now is borderline supplemental, right? It's in, I'm swimming some 100s with some core, right? It's, it's a, mine is a time period in the morning. I'm doing my swim core in the afternoon. I may be doing power. I may be doing cows. I may be doing bench. Mine's a, it's a two a day split for it's because of my timeline. It's what I have. I could do, if I had, you know, two, three hours in the morning straight through, I could get it done. But what I'm saying is, is that the supplemental, like, Whenever you're in a cycle where you're fit, f- focusing on strength and agility, are the swims borderline supplemental? Um, you know, when you're on a big run cycle, are the lifts and the cows borderline supplemental? Whereas, you know, you're doing pyramids and, you know, um, high reps, high volume. So, yeah, I, I think that that's the biggest thing is that you, you, you never want to, you know, and, and you talked about this when you guys were talking about food. And in teaching physiology, I, I, there, there should, you should never talk about elimination. And I believe with that in training too, you got to try really hard not to eliminate something. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to swim for two months. I'm not going to run at yeah, all. You don't want to do that. So, yeah. you know, if, when you're not running, when you're on your agility, you're doing sprints. Yep. You know what I mean? You're doing, so you're, you're just changing the running, you're changing the dynamics. So, um, you know, I, I don't need to tell you this. It's, I think for everyone out there is what are you supplementing? You know, how are you not getting away from something so that you're going to lose it or weaken it? So right. how do you, you know, how do you just scale back your running? Um, how do you scale back your swimming? Is that, you know, just varying, you know, your swimming to a point? You know, so when I get ready for a big swim, I'm putting a lot more mileage in. In the summer, right. I'm a lot leaner because I'm swimming like two mile swims and because I'm going to be going to an Same. event that's two plus or yep. close to four. So, you know, and that's for me, I start to taper off of my lifting. I go to more endurance running and, you know, and swimming and, and core work almost entirely. And I, I look very, very, well, not like anything great, but like very different. My muscles are longer and my shape is different in the summer. Um, but do I still get in and do some lighter power cleans? Do I still sure. do some straight legged deadlifts? Absolutely. I supplement my lifting. So I'm never too, too far away from my strength stuff. And that's so that when I start back up in the fall and in the winter, um, I can get up to weights that are going to stimulate me a little bit quicker. I'm not going to have such, you know, uh, such a hard time getting back to, you know, uh, you know, the, where I was uh, sure. the, the previous six, 10 weeks before. Yeah. Plus it's just good to kind of cycle through those things because you do get tired you get burned out yep. of running, yep. you know, longer distances. It's nice to cut those, you know, by 60, 75%. You know, especially if you're running a lot of distance and then just focus on your speed for that 25% that you're, that you're zoning, you know, in on your run, but you're focusing on other things that go well with sprints like power and strength. You know, you got to have some um, complementary, you know, elements of fitness that go real well together. Endurance, muscle stamina. So your calisthenics and your running and swimming go really well together. You can increase all three of those right at the same time, you know, but it's hard to increase your strength when you're on a high running swimming calisthenics cycle. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's a maintenance, you know, you, you maintain your strength when you're in that cycle, but it flips upside down when you're in the, my winter lift cycle, we're focusing on strength maybe even gaining some weight. So we're running less. Um, we're swimming. We still swim a lot just because, it, but it's mostly technique driven. You know, we're right. doing a lot of drown proofing, doing a lot of treading, which also helps for, cause we swim last also helps as a great cool down from all the lifts. Like today it was a leg day. Did a lot of squats, did some deadlifts, did some jumps, did some farmer carries up and down stairs, some fireman carries, but then we swam with fins and then we treaded water. Uh, without fins, just kind of loosen things up. And it's a good way to naturally recover from those uh, lifts that are really hard on your body. You know, when yeah. you're trying to gain weight, I mean, your whole central nervous system is spiked yep. and it's hard to recover. Yeah. And, and, and I, sometimes I'll say I need to swim today. 
You know, I need it. Meaning it's because I deadlifted my, and I'll tell you the swimming loosens the back, it loosens the shoulders. So it's, it's, if you have that opportunity, it's a good way to, you know, to, like you said, to, to cop compliment and yeah, you change it up and you can focus on, on the technique and things like that. But I think all of that is, you know, when you talk about an 18 month or how long people are with you, I'm, I'm speaking to an individual who's a freshman who's like, I can't swim all that well. I'm like, don't worry about it. You, you have time. Now, that doesn't mean just put it off. Don't blow it off. off. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But be, be comfortable in the fact that you have time to correct this. You have time to work on this. Come and see me anytime you're home on a break. You know, let's, let's work on it. Let's work on the technique. Let's take it slow, speed it up, back it off. Um, you know, and, and that's really working on becoming polished gray, be, becoming, um, you know, and I think that not to get off track at all, like, you know, with the academic piece or the whatever, but it's becoming a polymath. It's becoming a, a wide, you know, having this wide range of knowledge, physiology, you know, the mental toughness, you know, how do you approach these situations? How do you prepare? How do you be humble and how do you do it all really well is that that's formulation of the gray man, you know, um, the polished gray man, uh, because uh, I, there, there was no real negative connotation to the gray man. And it's not like you shoot to be the gray man. There's nothing really wrong and there's nothing really exceptional about the gray man. But the polished gray man is one who is pretty darn good at a lot of different things. Who's a fast learner who has a desire to have a wide, you know, reaching, you know, wealth of knowledge sure. um, you know who who's inquisitive and and is good looking teammate forward. yeah is is looking forward to these opportunities is 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 in touch with with the emotions to talk about things when they don't go right and you know call things out i mean it's such a wide range especially within the tactical athlete you know and then you can get into things too is you know you're a firefighter you're a police officer how are you also a good family man how, you know, there's so many aspects. How are you that polished gray? How are you working to be the best in every situation that you can be in? And I, and I think that's the, the goal of the conversation is, um, you know, like I said, be willing to not be great at something, but all the while understanding that we've all started at that point, you know, at, at some time in our life. And if we just walk away from it, it's, it's we're never going to get better at it. Yeah. You know, we continually go for it and we continue to learn. Um, and, and I think that your program with the periodization is another thing because we go too long and we hammer too long on one thing. We don't know when to back off and change it up because you, you know, we, I hear people, well, if I'm, you know, I, I, I have to have bench press in my workout. Uh, well, why? Yeah. And it, are, you, are you in a bench press contest? <laughs> I mean, right. that's all I say. Yeah. It's like, okay, where's the bench press contest? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and so that's, uh, you know, that's, that's the, that's the kind of, that's the rub there is that, you know, when you have these ideas that you have to do something or this is what you really like to do, you're going to kind of pigeonhole yourself into one thing. And, that, and that's where we started off this thing. You really have to have the maturity overall to be able to do that and to assess your own weakness. In fact, we, we just did a podcast this week on a weakness assessment tool, you know, where just assess yourself, I wrote an article on it and many different objective grading criteria from the PST to, you know, um, broad jump, you know, 300 meet, 300 yard shuttle runs, you know, rucks, um, swimming with fins, and you know lifts you know certain lifts in there as well weighted pull-ups you know all those little things that just kind of if you need an idea of where you should be it's a good little tool to take a look at and see where you are and you'll see that you have to be good at so many things that it, it's not when we say you have to be good but not great we're not striving for any mediocrity at all yeah. i mean being good at everything is hard mm -hmm. Very hard. Yeah. yeah. And, and it takes time. Yeah. And, and I, you know, it's, it's, it's fortunate. It's so fortunate to be able to have an article like that to go out and, and test yourself and be very honest, be very yeah. honest with uh, my, my chest didn't touch the floor on that push up. Um, you know, my, my, my elbows didn't break the plane of my knee, whatever, be, you know, and get your reps, count them and actually maybe do it faster, do it a little more intense than you would have to do a PST. Give yourself a little less rest than you would, you know, going to the locker oh, yeah. room. Change. Yep. yep. And, Don't and even. Then, yeah. Just and assess yourself. 
Yep. You know, assess yep. yourself. And I, I'll tell you, I had a guy who's very mature, a very, very mature guy uh, who's going for SWAT and he got it. Uh, the, I don't know, a few days or the week before in time, we did a uh, forward and backward PST. Now, and I told you this, and the, and the swim was nothing crazy, you know, but it was in all BTUs, fatigues. It's like 100 meter, you can't touch That's it. That's hard, man. Don't, yeah. don't knock that one, man, because swimming with clothes is not fun. Well, no, it's, it's it, not fun. you feel like a turd in the water. Yeah, but, yeah uh, yes. Uh, you know, but then the weighted pull-ups and everything, and we did a backwards to forwards, and, you know, and, and I don't think he passed because of that. I think he passed because of his willingness to do the backwards to forwards PST to make his training more intense than the test. And, you know, after he, you know, he's in SWAT school, and it was funny because he said, uh, you know, he trained with me as a hockey player in high school, and he said, we're doing a lot of that functional training stuff that we did with you. It's like, you know, it's different. It's not just, you know, lifting and doing right. this and doing am wraps and climbing. So, um, but that's the, you know, the maturity that the, the giving up, looking to ask someone some questions, meet up with me, you know, maybe, maybe cut down all those, that pull up didn't make it. And, you know, the, the beautiful part, like I said, is that there was no consequence for him if he didn't do well. The only thing that he could really the, the, the really best part or the only thing you could do is grow from the experience. Oh, whoa, I, I better, you know, work hard before this. I better, you know, fix that part on the swim. I better do better push ups. I better, you know, so they're, you know, when they're training with me or with you, they're not failing anything. They're only really potentially pointing out where they can improve. Yep. Absolutely. And I think, I think that's such a benefit for, for absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. So let's wrap this up and let's say, so we, we talk a little bit about training with Pat or training with myself. I'm in Maryland. Patrick is in Connecticut. And if you go to stewsmith.com, there's a, a red link at the top of that page that says free workouts. And we're not kidding. You know, these are free workouts and it's not easy finding people who will donate their time to train people with free workouts. So basically what we do is these are just our workouts that we invite people to come and attend. And it's nice to not have, you know, working out by yourself. So these are actually workouts as part of my periodization system that I use. We sometimes even train two a day, uh, depending on the day of the week, but you can find out more about those at the stewsmith.com website and click the free workouts link. Uh, there's other cities that have volunteer trainers in as well. And um, some people do it regularly. Some people do it whenever it, they're free. Some people only do it on the weekend. So, um, but, you know, finding people that want to donate their time to train people is not easy. So there's not a, we don't cover every state. We don't cover every city, but we probably have about 20, 25 people that actually spend some time doing that. And it's a lot of fun. To, to do. So anybody listening that uh, is looking for that kind of assistance, go to that uh, webpage and check it out. What I will do also is if I, I mentioned a link or two or an article or video in this video, I'll put it in the description below um, for the YouTube uh, description and you can just click that link and see the objective grading criteria for weaknesses and you know just assess where you are and some other PST, tactical fitness, periodization, linking, and stuff like that. So, but as always, Patrick, I appreciate your time and your input on this. Uh, very valuable. And of course, your willingness to train people for, for free in your area is, um, is very, we, we are very grateful for that. So, well, thank, thank you for all everything you've shared and, and the knowledge that you have and um, the opportunity you give a lot of these people. And, and you know, and my, uh, I, my phone number is on that contact. My workouts can be random. You know, if I have a kid home sick, I might have to wait till my wife gets home. Um, but I always like to meet up with them and, and give them encouraging words and, you know, support and, you know, and point out maybe some of their weaknesses. So, yep. you know, please feel free to reach out. Yep. You know, and he's I, a great swim instructor too. So take well, advantage. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. All right, folks. Well, that is it. And uh, Patrick, once again, thanks again. And this is another tactical fitness report. And uh, we will chat with you guys later.